Journey 101. And today we're doing centers for one and two year olds. And this is such an important time. 80% of brain development, brain growth happens, we're told by experts, before children are age three. This is so important to building for their later life. This chance to help your child be a thinker, to be a questioner, to be someone who is really alive to the joy of learning and the joy of life. And so here are, I have this video with many, many short, short videos to demonstrate to you how these different centers or stations can work. So you know, the big thing here though is to be positive because you are building on what your child thinks of learning, what your child thinks of, you know, how learning at home happens. And so you really want to focus on the joy of this and have this be an interactive process. Even though I talk about centers um, in other videos as an independent thing, for kids at this age, it's a way to kind of bond with parents. It's a way to kind of grow together. And the, the way to start is the most fun way, is the most open-ended way, I think, is, in my opinion, is probably a water table. So here's a water table, and you can see this little cutie um, enjoying his water table. There's all different things in here. You can change them to have, a, you know, a different sort of beach things or sort of metal clanking things or boats. But, um, you know, a lot of times people really want to put sand in these same tables. And of course, you can. It's great. But, um, you know, sand can get really thrown around so easily. It can really turn into like a giant, giant mess. But something else you can, might want to try to put in there is you can see that there's noodles in here now and the noodles can act like very interesting things to pour from one container to the other. You know, little bulldozers can move it around. This is a really great way to start with centers and this idea like, oh, when this table's out, fun things are going to happen. Um, this particular table is very like a table I use with my kids when they were young by Joni Craft, but this particular one is another Made in USA brand. And what I really like about this is if you look at the bottom here, has a spout that makes it very hard for the child to drain out the water, which is a really big thing with a water table. Another water table that I also purchased from Step 2, and you know, it also a great US company, but the thing that's wrong with this one is that it's very easy for the child to just pull out the plug and the water all drains out. So anyway, this is still a great table and you, know, you can put lots of things in it. You can see I put blocks in here that are you know, really fun to just move around. But so this is the idea. It's starting with these open-ended tables. And this is a great way when they're, even when they're just first um, learning to stand up, particularly this wooden and red one, you know, really is very sturdy. They can pull up on it. They can explore it. They can really get that first step of this idea like fun things happen at this table. This table is, is really great. So um, if we're moving on there and they're ready for the next thing, it's time to start thinking about you know what you can put on the table. This particular water table that um, I showed you has a wooden thing that goes on top of it and it you know, fits very securely and so it's kind of multi-purpose. It can be the water table, but then it, it just, you know, transforms into your, your, your center table. And of course you could use shelves. People, some people really like shelves, but I really like tables for these earliest kids because the process of moving the center from the, the shelf to the table is, you know, a little bit problematic sometimes for children. And I still like to have that table set out where they can pick which activity goes there. And so you don't want to just like have the table like cram the things, but you know, three, four things that are out there and that they have the choice of choosing. Like, Oh, at first I'd like to try this, and then I'd like to try this, and then I'd like to try that. But back to the sand, kind of another, if you were thinking of, mm, what would be like another transition into these centers that would be really interesting and pretty open-ended? I think a sand tray is a really fun thing. Even if your child dumps the sand on the floor, ah, you know, it's not hard to clean up. It's much different than, you know, handfuls and handfuls of sand. You can use a stylus, you can use a pencil, you can use a block, they can use their finger, and they can write in the sand. This particular sand tray is from Montessori, but you, know, you could use any tray that you wanted to, really. Um, you can, of course, as the child ages, you can use it in, you know, to write your name in the sand. But at this early age, really just sticking with these open-ended things that aren't, you know, skill-based or, you know, really specific things happening really makes it much more dry. And you know you can you can pile the sand in a small pile in the center. You can have it all spread out. There's a lot of things you can do that can vary it. And this is like a really big, big hit for things that like that they want to do. So your tables could look different. You know, here's a small green table that's very short on the floor. Um, 
you can do, you can go back to those blue tables. Um, here you can see actually an end table that has a couple centers set out on it. But it's all these things that your child comes into the room, they wake up from their nap, or whatever it is that the time is, and then they, they get this, they get this idea of like, oh, this is where I go for learning. This is where things happen that are really fun. I really think it's an extra just little bonus if during this time you turn on some classical music or maybe some music just for children. I think classical music is really great for brain development. Renee, did you want to say anything? Helen, these are great ideas. We love all the, the, the various ways you could use that water table and do those table setups with uh, the water or with the sand and the, I, I love the, the, the noodles and the lentils. Um, this helps keep your kids interested. It shows that different skills they can learn and that it doesn't become just one big repetition every day. So important for brain development, for learning, for excitement, for joy, really. How excited uh, does your toddler get when you, when you have these different activities or it's a varied and it's a little bit different than last time. And of course, you know I'm gonna remark on the classical music or playing the children's music. Um, so fun and I have so many great memories of, of my children at that stage and doing these things and having classical music and children's songs um, that that uh, just keep building as your toddler grows that's those those brain connections that are being made at this age are going to continue growing um, and you're going to build on on what you've done these first couple of years. So when you're looking at your centers, here you see my little guy with a peg toy that really what I thought he was going to want to do is put uh, the you know, little um, wooden things on the peg indefinitely. But actually, he only wanted to do that a few times. But he was very interested in taking all of the little wooden pieces out and making a pile and then carefully putting them all back in. This is the joy of centers with one and two year olds. Whatever you thought was the actual way they were gonna use it, they may find a different, more creative, more inventive way that speaks to them. And I think that this is just what you want to happen, right? You don't want it to turn out that centers are this really rigid time where it's like, you must do it exactly like this. There's no other way, right? You want that creativity, you want that higher level thinking. You want them to explore with their own you know, abilities. So let's just say that we're, we're going with music First. Musical centers are great for kids this age. There's a lot of science involved in thinking through like what makes a sound, how does this work. It works really well whether it's music or something else. I'm just trying to give you the idea to group things together. So you can see here that there's a couple different tables where it's uh, examples of how you could group together musical instruments. So in this first one, um, you can see that there's like a xylophone, there's a couple other things, and you see this little wooden box here. So having a little box that has the things that go with the center kind of together, kind of centered, can really be helpful. Now in this case, it's the hammer for, you know, the xylophone, but it's also a ball that can be used uh, to make sounds too. So it just kind of teaches that child you know, the basic idea of pattern and organization, like, oh, in this box are the things that I need, they're gonna go together. So here on, here on the, the sort of blue ottoman, you can see that drums and a tambourine are set up. Um, these are all things from kinder music. Kinder music has a lot of really great instruments, and in fact, these are, um, I think these are all made in the USA. But at any rate, you can see how having those instruments all together to kind of explore is really more interesting maybe than if you had just a variety of different things. Um, over here, you can see that he's hitting the xylophone uh, with the hammer but then he's looking over at the stacked toy and thinking, I think I could chew on that for a little while and go back again just let your child kind of explore the center right you know it's okay if they go from one thing to the other you want them to be thinking you want them to be curious you don't want to be like hey stick with this we're on this right now right you want them to be thinking you want them to be excited about these centers also realize that things are gonna go on the floor sometimes. The table really sets it up. The table is really the thing that kind of cues them in. Interesting things are happening in here, but sometimes they're gonna move it. So in this particular um, situation, the chime is like a lot, this little toy is a chiming thing, is a lot more interesting to him apparently on the floor than it was up top. But that's okay, that's part of learning, that's part of growing. You can see that sometimes the actual
actual container of the center is really important. So picking a metal dog bowl to put these instruments in really kind of elevates it in a different way because even if all he does is hit the rain stick and the chimes on the metal bowl, that's going to make an interesting sound. Another time that might happen for him with a plastic bowl or a wooden bowl. So the way the center is set up can really be part of how it's attractive to the child. Here again, the metal bowl. And this is just very simple. Lots of these are things that you can just have at home. So you've got a metal spoon, you've got a plastic thing. And just the way that that is going to hit the bowl itself becomes really interesting, right? Another thing when you're doing these centers, still just sticking to this musical theme, is waiting for ways your child can see cause and effect and for them to engage in playing with you. So you can see with this rain stick, he's going to just roll it a little bit and then I'm gonna roll it back and he's gonna be pretty interested in rolling that back and forth for a while. This becomes really interesting. It was interesting on the table, but now it's interesting on the floor and it's interesting to play together that interaction of how that's gonna happen. You're gonna look for those moments in life, look for those pieces in the center where play and higher level thinking is going to happen. Also, sometimes unexpected things are going to happen. This is like the great train disaster here where he uh, had this train all set up and each car had a different number of things in it, but he played with that for a little while and then he wanted to zoom the train off. Everything broke into a lot of pieces and then I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it, but he is just chortling hysterically, moving the train around through the wreckage. Like he was like never interested in that train before. So here's the thing is the, the act of playing with things on and off can become just really important to you know this whole experience that they're going to have together. So this is an example where this is that grass kind of stuff for baby bottles when you turn it over to dry. It has lots of like little um, soft spiky things in it. And um, this is, these are some pink puzzle pieces that are part of these other um, actual <laughs> Montessori puzzle thing, but it, I'm taking them out of context and I'm putting them in here. And he's very interested in sticking them in that grass and moving them out of the grass. And you're, how does that work? Um, next to that, you can see that there's uh, something that's really for an older child probably, but he can look at that number two. He could uh, use his fingers on the letters to feel it. And there's gonna be two items in there that he can just look into. So I'm not hitting that hard. I'm not asking him to do a lot about that because because really, I don't want I don't want this to be very skill based. But it's you know I just thought I'd explain it right there that you can mix in a little bit of skills with also these higher level thinkies. So what I want from these centers is these these questions in my for the child to hear like what how why what you know questioning things that are much more interesting and much more going to build that brain development than just like if you you know had flashcards that you were showing your child or something but so let's look at first at this water wheel so he's seen this water wheel before he knows that that water wheel will move in his little baby pool with water he's seen it move with sand but now we're expanding on this where he has some different instruments fork and some other things to see well could i move that like how can i move that how can i make if i if i move the one will will the other one move and so you're building you're building on these skills of thinking for later you keep you looking for ways that the child is thinking that the baby is starting to explore um, this is just like the typical hide the thing in the toilet paper roll so he's already seen this happen with a cylinder where it easily comes in and out but this is a new thing with an actual like re uh, rectangular uh, square that's it's harder. He has to think about like if I crunch the tube, will it still fit in there? You know, this isn't going to just go in smoothly. I'm going to have to like work at this, or you know, a lot harder. Um, so another thing is is egg cartons. So you, you know, you can do so much with just a plain egg carton. You can also cut it into ten if you want to start working on a ten frame with a child early. But in this idea, you're just giving them a box of different things, and you're saying to them like hey, what fits in the egg carton? And you know, they can just think like, oh, well, this rattle won't fit in on this direction, but if I turn it to the round section, it would fit. And so it can just be that, or it can even just be you have 10 of the same things that you put in. But all of these kind of things that are, um, you know, <laughs> put things in here, take things out here, are really interesting to kids at this age. Just having a simple wooden box that you set out on your center table and you put different things in it and you shake it for the child. And even if their language skills aren't enough that they can speak back to you, you're still saying them, what do you think is in here? Let's listen. What could this be? And even if child is just really basic skills can make a guess like, you know, it's a ball, it's a ball, or it's a go-go, you know, for it's a car. You know, they can start to make these guessing. And this is 
so great for thinking, like what's in the box? You know, super simple to do, but such good thinking skills, particularly you know, if you're asking them, listen to the sound, how does it go? On that sort of, you know, same train of thought, this video would take forever, so this was a shortened video, but this started out with five different boxes, and so he can shake the box, and he can hear a chime, a little pink chime in there, and so he's got the idea of like, first I have to open this box, and then I have to shake up this box, and this box, until he's finally gonna get down to the little box where the thing is. This is great for thinking, this is great for questioning, right, and this is endlessly interesting, and you can change it around a lot. Another thing is uh, really something that involves tracking with their eyes. And so um, this product is by Tag. It's a really great American company. Anyway, and instead of just having a track on one thing, which a lot of things have, or, you know, there's lots of things for older kids where you put it together. This is just really stable. So your young child can put the ball in there and they have to really watch it. It's quite a ways down there to track. You can also make this more interesting by giving them other objects. Will other objects go down there? A smaller ball, a bigger ball, a square? Like, how will this happen? And one thing about this is it's so sturdy that it also can be pushed around. So you can see that he also just enjoys pushing this around on the wood floor. And uh, this is again, how does this happen? Why does this happen? And what's going on here? These all are questions that you know, are getting asked and having this experience of thinking through. Besides, it's just fun. It's just fun for your child and you to do together. And this thing that's at their age level, right? So sometimes you are going to have centers, possibly, I, I like centers, that are sometimes just working on small motor skills. So even though you're not asking your child to write, you're asking them to uh, have these experiences where they're gonna get that control so that later, when it is time to learn to write, it will be just that much easier. So you know, this is like that sand table, we already did this. But maybe a good place to start is with a hammer. So you can see that you know, hitting a hammer on these fake nails is very exciting, does require some you know, coordination, and having some other things near this on the center, like you see this wood rainbow puzzle taken apart, that you know, hitting that can be interesting too. So that, that's, a, that's a start for that, that small motor skill. And then here you see him with his hedgehog. This is great for dexterity. He has to figure out like, oh, does it, will it work with the wider side or do I have to put the narrow side in? And of course, at this age, it's also going to be just great to chew on it, like whatever you're going to chew on. But going through this process of working on the small skills is great. Um, uh, you can see him here with an abacus and a, uh, you know, abacus is a really great thing for tracking, and those, especially this one, it's really small beads. Moving it along really takes thinking, you know, that, 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 that gesture of moving it really small. That's when it, that one is by, um, that's a Montessori one, I think. And here is bees in a hive. So again, he's not being asked to actually put them in color code, but he is being asked to, uh, well, well, he's not being asked, but he's doing it. Put the bees in this hive or that other hive. And can two bees fit in a hive? You know, how does this go together? This is just really about those small skills. Occasionally, you probably do want to have a skill-based uh, center. And so here's an example of color matching where he's putting the people in the little red circle that are the little, if it's a red person goes in the red person, if it's a purple person goes in the red square, however it goes together. So it's a little color matching. And you can see these Montessori blocks, which um, he, this set is, I think, for, for this age, there's five of them. But they also have these squares where you match the size to the square. So, you know, sometimes throwing in, you know, some skill based things can be uh, really, a, you know, is, is great. It's, I, I just think it's really important not to have like too much of it. Even though this video is not about this, I wanted to at least throw in a couple of videos about encouraging pretend and creative play. And so you can see here that he's hiding under a blanket and he thinks he's very, like, we're not even there. So when your child is trying to play with you, play back, make a big deal out of it, talk to them in an excited voice. Uh, you know, if they want to uh, pretend to uh, give you something to eat, you know, really go all out to encourage that pretend, that creative play. Here's like the classic, you know, ribbon on a stick. You can buy these everywhere. You can make them yourself. You can use scarves. So fun for kids. But even in this case, it turns out to be really fun to just try to poke it into the cushions of the couch. Like however they want to work with these things is really the thing that you want to happen is this creativity, this joy. Renee, did you want to add anything before I go on to the next thing? Helen, these are great ideas. I, I really love them. And, and I really love that you emphasized um, uh, using these centers and, and allowing your toddler to use these centers in, in, in whatever creative way that's coming to them. And maybe it's not exactly what you were expecting them to do, but 
realizing that they've found something new to do with that center, with those objects, with those toys, with those tools, and moving them from different locations. Like when you talk from the table to the floor, that's a whole new context for that child to discover how that toy, that musical instrument, that tool, how can it be used differently? What can I use it for? And what happens when I do this, as opposed to when I do this? Um, those are all building thinking brain, um, critical thinking skills that they're using, as well as using those motor skills, those major and minor fine motor skills. And it's allowing them to really discover their world around them, to discover how things work, to discover how things can work differently in different um, locations and different situations and using those toys and tools um, in a whole new way. And, and I really, just one last thing, I really loved your box and the guessing game. So much fun and uh, so much brain building going on there and figuring out what's in that box. There's so many little skills involved in that. Um, I really love that idea. And, and these are, there's so many ideas here that fit any budget, any situation, using those things that you have around your house to supplement some other things that you've invested in. Um, and I love all these American made products. Uh, great, Helen, thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you, Renee. Okay, so one last tip is really taking what you have and changing it constantly also can really build in these skills that you want and just makes everything go a lot farther. So if we go back to that original step two table that I just took the top off of, so we're using it, and you can see here that you can instead put in trucks and these are base 10 blocks. You could put in trucks and go back to the other idea of um, using uh, macaroni, wh whatever. So it's this idea that this table is also changing, like things are changing, new things are happening. I go to the table, wow, my life is so exciting. Um, another thing is balls, and in the, for my for this particular little guy, taking the balls out of the clear plastic container and putting them into the bigger one and back, or stirring the balls up with a spoon were a really big hit. Um, probably the favorite is these blocks, which can be you know endlessly done. And putting them in a, a table like this with um, sides makes it a lot less frustrating for the child because there's a lot of play and you know oh I built it up and it fell down, but it's not going to fall on the floor. You know it, it, there's there's really great things to do with it. It goes down the slide. Um, these blocks are made in America, um, from, in mixed Michigan, even Michigan lumber. So your child can just chew on them forever, which was also really a big hit. Just chewing on these blocks. This is another step two table and uh, Made in America. And you can see that this is for cars. Now, this could be really interesting just with what it comes with. And it comes with these sort of trucks with balls and you can move it around and that's really great. But the thing is, is by not crowding it with too many things, but changing it around, you can make it even more interesting. So here it is with a hob of train. And you can see how a train with these little magnets on it moving around really changes what you're gonna do with this area and kind of changes it up. Or here again with some um, John Deere um, uh, construction trucks. You, you, you can really see how uh, what you do with it can really change. And just taking that to outside, you know, yes, this, this child has a waiting pool. Yes, he has a sandbox. But actually, just to change that by dumping that out sometime and putting in water, letting them do water and sand or sweep up the sand pile on the thing can really make their world even more interesting. So, Today, I hope that we gave you some ideas for centers with one and two year olds, things that you can create from your own life, things that you have, maybe some things that you want to get. But the big thing is like to have that table out there, to have it ready and have things changing so that your child really has these rich intellectual experiences, doing it with your child so that you have these activities that you're growing together with this idea that really great things happen at home. Learning happens at home. Love happens at home. Life happens at home. And if please remember that tip of trying to be positive. This is an age where you're really building that relationship with your child. And you're also building that relationship of learning together. And you love learning together. And it's a wonderful thing. So it's really important to keep these experiences, in my opinion, really positive, really fun, really engaging. So that you're helping your child's brain build and you're helping their soul build and you're helping your family bonds build. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join us on another one of our videos. Have a great day. See you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.